guess it's still morning. So good morning. Uh, I'm Dennis Bogren, Northeast Regional Sales Manager for Murder Press. I know most of you are in this room. Uh, I want to thank you for having me here. Uh, I, I, it's kind of a last minute add-in, uh, you know, but I appreciate Jim squeezing me in. Before I get started here on our slide presentation, uh, I'd like to address something that has, has come up. As we all know, we live in a global society anymore. So a lot of things that uh, happen in other parts of the world will greatly affect us. And there's an issue going on right now uh, in Indonesia that is definitely going to affect us in the stainless steel part of our business. Uh, January 12th, they're having a ban on any mineral nickel ore that leaves the country of Indonesia uh, unless they have it smelted there in their smelting uh, companies. What this is going to do is they are the leading producer of nickel ore in the world. So what's going to happen is when China starts looking for this nickel ore to manufacture the stainless steel for Taiwan, uh, there's going to be shortages. So eventually this will trickle down to us. Uh, we are already seeing some people now start to uh, uh, be worried because right now there's too much stainless steel supply. And that's why the prices have been depressed. What you're going to see now with this ban is you're going to start seeing the supplies go down. And eventually there will be a price jump, so you know you like to see that, uh, but there could be a supply issue. So 2014 is going to be a, uh, um, a very uh, difficult year with regards to inventory. So. You know, I wanted to mention that to you because that's something that you don't get every day. Uh, something you talk to your customers about that you know that there's you know, uh, global issues down there that could affect us. And it just gives you more uh, uh, respect with your customers that you know what's going on out there in the world. So uh, I do, I have packets for all you and I have some blogs and some news releases on this. And I have the ASA Commodity Report also copied that you know, I can give each and each of you during the afternoon meetings so that you know uh, and you can pass them on. I mean, it's, it's common knowledge. It's on the internet. Everything's on the internet. But, uh, but yeah, it, I think that's something that we need to know as we move forward. So uh, Bob's going to have plenty of inventory. He promised me that. So uh, right. let's get started. Uh, Mark Grass, uh, we're a small family run. Uh, we are the nation's leading manufacturer of uh, uh, brass, stainless, chrome, and aluminum pipe nipples. Uh, we're a family-run business. Uh, we have over 2,500 manufactured products, and we have over 200 people working in our facilities. I'm going to fly through these because there's a lot of slides here, and I want to concentrate more on the stainless steel than anything. Okay, we have four locations. Headquartered in Cleveland in our manufacturing facility, and we have uh, distribution centers in Sparks, Nevada, Dallas, Texas, and Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, product line enhancements, we're always looking for new products and, and way to expand our line. We all know that brass seems to be a dying commodity these days. Uh, there's still a lot of repair work with brass, but uh, the market tends to be more in stainless steel. Uh, so that's where we're looking to expand uh, you know, our lines. Uh, we do have, uh, coming soon, we have a uh, swing gate and globe valves uh, to add on to the ball valves we have. Uh, galvanized ductile iron backup flanges, stainless steel ball valves. You can see that in the past five or six years, we've added something every year as, we, as we're trying to grow. Uh, technology. Uh, Website is excellent, user-friendly, even I can use it. Uh, we have on there the Web Express. Uh, this is uh, uh, something that you can order directly, you can go in and check prices, you can check availability. You guys that are uh, quoting jobs sitting at home at night, I know you all do that, sitting at home, uh, you can go in and check our inventory, you can check price, uh, you can even check uh, shipments. Yeah, if shipments went out, you can trace them via UPS. So it's an it's a excellent uh, website. They've done a lot of good work on it. We have a, a lead-free tag. A whole lot of information on the lead-free changeover. The legislation, uh, the uh, ANSI 
standards and the ASDM. Uh, MTRs, you can get an MTR 24-7. Uh, we have chat rooms that you can uh, talk to somebody live if, if need be. And uh, we have EDI and uh, we also have BMI. I don't think you see BMI as much anymore. That was a, that was a fad there that seems to be dying out a little bit. Uh, communication, we have a Twitter page. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Uh, we put information on there, uh, new products, uh, uh, price increases, and we have an email solution that we send out mass emails. We have a pipeline that we put out quarterly that we email out through this email solution. Uh, manufacturing capabilities, uh, again, we have different types of threads uh, that we can make. Uh, NPSL, NPSN, NPT, general use, and uh, NPTF and the NPSH. Uh, you're getting any kind of special uh, request on pipe nipples, uh, give us a call. Uh, machining processes, we can do a plain roller cut on pipe, square ring, ream and chafer, big tall groove, any kind of OD, ID machining or pipe bending. Uh, again, these specials, uh, we have a, a cell, a separate cell for these specials. And, uh, you know, don't say no to anything. Give us a call. Uh, we uh, make sure that we can uh, identify the mill number, the heat number on all the products. Uh, we need to make sure that we can go back if there's an issue and find out where the source was. Uh, positive metal identification, stamping machines are set up and verified and recorded even before they start. Uh, closed nipples cannot be stamped, but we color code. Uh, procurement, this is, Bob, this is what you say every night before you go to bed. Uh, procurement of the right materials and the right quantities for delivery at the right time and place from the right source with the right service at the right price. We all try to do this. One of the things that Merit does in our purchasing is that uh, we have long time vendor relationships. We don't change vendors every couple of years. Um, you know, as like I said, we're a small family run business and that's, that's the way we, we deal with our vendors and our uh, wholesalers. Vendors have to go through, uh, we make sure we visit them on an annual basis, but they go through a, a, a testing. They have to be ISO certified. Um, serviceability is, is a constant focus, and we send an assessment form to them uh, every year. Uh, now, in the perspective one, we would send that. We get letters of compliance, and we get samples, and we send the samples out to a, a testing mill. Uh, so it's not like just going over there, seeing a mill looks great. I mean, it, it would take a couple years for us to start a new vendor. So we tend to stay with the vendors we have. And a lot of times when you're dealing overseas, you have to go through a broker. One of the problems with the broker is unless you specify a manufacturer, that broker, he's going out and he's looking for his own manufacturer. So you could be buying from one factory one month, and the next month you could be buying from somewhere else. That it won't happen with us. Um, you know, we, we deal with the uh, set vendors all the time, and for your 150-pound fittings, it's Kingdom Industries, and uh, you, know, you won't see other stainless fittings, 150 pounds, from anybody but Kingdom with us. Uh, again, you know, the, all products meet or exceed uh, the applicable ASDM and ANSI standards. This is an overview, just this is what you guys, you know, call on. Uh, this is the industries we serve. Chemical, petrochemical, pulp and paper, power generation, pharmaceutical, food and beverage, breweries, uh, wastewater treatment, computer, aerospace, marine. Any of these that you see on your daily travels, uh, there's an opportunity uh, for stains. Uh, this is product specifications. Again, this is all on the, uh, the website. Uh, this is for the brass. Uh, this is for stainless. Uh, I'll, I'll run through the brass real quick here because your emphasis is more on stainless. And the brass is changing a lot anyway. The one thing with brass is because there's so much brass out there, there will be continued repairs on it. You have the lead-free legislation coming in. Uh, Murdered brass will continue to have both leaded and lead-free brass. Um, we have a big industrial base and they still need the leaded brass fitting. So we will be dual inventory. Uh, our import gas 
brass, brass fittings come from Siam, uh, the Cadillac and the, uh, the imports, and you know, lead free, uh, also from Siam, and the domestic is from New England Union. Uh, you know, brass nipples, brass pipe, uh, brass pipe, most of it's coming from Thailand and Serbia. Be hard pressed to find a domestic manufacturer of brass pipe anymore. Chrome plated nipple, that's a uh, Reason to use stainless steel. Naturally, uh, uh, the cleanliness is maintaining the product, uh, prevention of contamination from any small particles of rust or sale that scale that can happen. Uh, resist corrosive attack from you know hundreds of chemicals, uh, greater strength, and, and, and it always looks that way. With brass, you look at brass, it's been out there for 25 years. It's starting to turn dark, you know, a little gray, green, uh, whereas the stainless steel will look the same way 20 years from now. Uh, characteristics, uh, again, your pipe beat engineers are pretty much going to uh, specify uh, your stainless steel and what they're looking for. They'll look into the ANSI standards and the ASTM to find what they're looking for. Uh, 150 pound fittings. Uh, it's a chemical comp composition. One of the things you have to worry about um, with 150 pound fittings, so it used to be there was one fitting, it was called the old Israeli fitting. This was the standard of the industry. Uh, it was a good, heavy, solid fitting. Well, what happened over the years is you had more manufacturers globally get into the market and they, oh, let's make it a little thinner, let's make it a little lighter, you know, and, and things started to go haywire. So they got together and they, they, they put together a uh, specification, the MSS SP114. And they wanted to standardize the size, the threads, the weight of the 150 pound fittings. And, and this was done, I guess, back in the, uh, 1995, somewhere like that. But it never really never gathered any strength. But we've continued to see fittings get thinner and cheaper. And so you're seeing now. Uh, more companies are starting to get back into specifying the SP114. Uh, our uh, ISO 4049 fitting uh, is a solid fitting as you, you guys sell it all the time. Uh, I've never had anybody say that it, it, uh, they have found a better fitting than that is. Well, the SP114 is a little better than that. I have samples I'll show you this afternoon, but it's a little bit heavier. The issue you have is there's an ISO uh, pattern out there. It's an ISO 4144 thin wall fitting. Um, most of my competitors have. Uh, and there's a lot of them being returned, rejected. And when you're competing against somebody and you're maybe getting blown out price wise, find out what fitting they're looking for. Because it is an inexpensive, you know, a, a cheaper model. And, and it looks like you could put a knife through it. That's how thin it is. Real cheap looking. But beware of that. You know, I don't have any samples of that. So, you know, uh, they're not selling a whole hell of a lot of them around here. Yeah. You know who's buying them? Uh, the plumbing guys. You know, the industrial guys, uh, they want a little bit more of a quality fitting. What you're seeing with the lead-free fitting is that a lot of the plumbing houses, uh, because of the price, stainless steel is cheaper than brass, uh, they're leaning more to go into the stainless steel side. And in doing that, you know, they'll just all they wanted to last is a year and a day. You know, how many times have we heard that? So uh, this 41, 44 fitting is being sold more into the plumbing end than it is in the industrial end. So beware of that when you're out uh, quoting jobs. Uh, and, and actually, stainless steel is certified as low lead. You know, uh, NSF 61 has. You know, we if you look on their website. You will see Merit Brass for not only the brass fitting, but our stainless fittings also qualified as low lead. Uh, bar stock, 3,000 pound socket weld fittings. Again, just, you know, you guys are pretty much aware we have it. You buy it all the time. Uh, and we do have stainless steel outlets now. That was something new that we added a couple years ago. Uh, but weld fittings, uh, again, you know, mid spec type of uh, this. Last year, if you, you, know, you heard a lot about a dumping suit on stainless pipe. Um, we expected all kinds of shortages last year. 
because of the, the dumping suit against the Chinese manufacturers. Never really developed, and I think the reason it didn't is because the demand was so low. If we would have had any kind of demand in 2013, I think you would have seen a big problem with uh, stainless pipe. And, you know, again, but well fittings is made from that pipe, you would have had a problem with the fittings also. We do have MSS flanges, uh, a dying commodity. Uh, they used to be a lot less expensive than ANSI flanges, but, you know, that's changed. So, uh, you know, uh, we do have them, but uh, very little market for them. Uh, ANSI flanges, you know, we have a full line of them. Uh, ANSI flanges, we have threaded, blind, and we have slip-on welding neck, socket weld, lap joint, and just the regular plate. Stainless steel pipe, not a lot to say on that. Uh, we do have instrumentation tubing. Uh, this is something that, that was new to us a couple years ago. I think you have bought some of it. Um, we have uh, seamless and welded. Uh, runs anywhere from 1 8 OD to 1 inch. Uh, your main walls are 035, 049, and 065. We do have the other three, but you know the, the smaller three is your, your main focus. Stainless steel nipples, that's our cup of tea. Uh, ball valves. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we have a, a, a small line of ball valves that we are working to expand right now. We have a, a one, two, and a three-piece ball valve. And this is a place where you know, we could see some growth with you uh, in the stainless ball valves. As uh, you saw on the first enhancement slide, we will be coming in with uh, gate valves, low, and check valves. So, um, you know, I'll be banging Bob on that one, trying to get some inventory in there. But, uh, you know, when you look at these valves, they're very uh, uh, competitive valve, uh, price-wise and uh, quality. Kingdom Industry, that makes 150 pound fitting, uh, they, they're making the valves also. Uh, I got a couple samples I'll be showing you this afternoon. This is the flange and ball valve we just came out uh, with this year, adding to the line. This is, uh, we're selling a bunch of these in the oil patch. Uh, you know, down in uh, the Texas area and up in the Dakotas. Uh, seems to be a big market. I think you've sold a couple up in Williamsport. You know. uh, PTFE thread tape. Uh, you know, we came out with this last year. Again, you guys have it in this. One of the reasons we uh, got into the tape business is that uh, we saw a lot of change up going from brass to stainless. And you can't use the same tape that you've used for years and years. Uh, and we knew a lot of plumbing houses would be making this change. So we partnered with a company and uh, we had our brand name put on it so that if you're selling stainless steel fittings from Merrick Brass, you know, you can buy tape from Merrick Brass also. Uh, and it's nickel infused tape, PTFE tape, um, you know, and it's excellent. We've had a lot of success. Uh, carbon steel fittings and outlets, uh, we have OLEDs and we have 2,000 and 3,000 pounds of carbon steel fittings. Uh, we have duct iron, backup flanges, and galvanized. Uh, we just came out with the galvanized just uh, late in 2013. And that's pretty much it. You know, I ran through that pretty quickly. Uh, if you've got any questions, we can talk this afternoon. But uh, if I have to focus on anything, it's one that, you know, the, the, the Indonesia problem <coughs> with uh, uh, supply and the 150 pound fittings, guys. Be careful what's out there. Okay? Thanks for your time.